Psalm 82, one. God, and the Hebrew word, which it originally is written in, is Elohim, is Elohim. Now, one of the mistakes that Bible teachers have made is taking Elohim and making it a name for God, the one true God. And if you do say that this is the one true God has taken his place in the, what? Divine counsel. You ever been at a business that had a staff meeting? You ever had an executive team, overseers, performance reviews, those who told others under their authority what to do? That's the divine counsel. This is where divine beings meet with God. Sometimes they observe him work, as we just read in Job at creation. Sometimes God gives them duties to execute upon. Uh, sometimes God actually delegates decisions to them. It's like his staff. In the midst of the what? God's Elohim, same word, he holds judgment. Verses like this have been used by false teachers to teach that there are many gods. I did a debate with Deepak Chopra and others on Satan on ABC Nightline years ago. And this was a verse that he pulled up to say that we're all God and part of the Godhead and, and we're all divine and there's lots of gods and we need to get over the myth of one true God. Elohim does not refer to a, an attribute necessarily of God, but to any member of the unseen realm. This can include God and angels and fallen angels who are demons and other divine beings. So anyone who is a resident of the unseen realm is called an Elohim. Just like in our day, there'll be people of different ages, different races, different languages, different nations, but we're all part of the human family. That ultimately we're all in the same category. That would be the concept behind the language for Elohim. And what it's talking about here is that God has taken his place in the divine council in the midst of the gods. Those are other divine beings. This would be the sons of God, angelic beings and others. And from there, he holds judgment. Now, the divine council is referred to additionally through the scriptures as the assembly of the holy ones, the council of the holy ones, the hosts, the seat of the gods, the mount of assembly, the court in judgment and the heavenly host. Occasionally, the divine council comes down to meet with God's human family. There's a guy named Jacob in the Old Testament and a ladder comes down from heaven and these beings come down and they meet with him and they look human, they lead him, they speak with him. And at the end, he realizes these were divine beings and he names that place Bethel, meaning the place of God, that, that, that God sent the divine council to meet with me. Uh, additionally, in the opening chapter of Luke's, uh, of, uh, of Luke's work uh, titled Acts, where we see the Holy Spirit descending, and then we see rushing wind and tongues of fire and all these supernatural things, that's the divine council showing up to commission the New Testament church. Now, this being said, there are times in the Bible where God peels back the curtain and he allows us to see the divine council meeting in the unseen realm. One place is Daniel. We're gonna start that book in January. It's gonna be 11 week case study, verse by verse on all of these principles. There are other occasions as well. It says in Isaiah six, he says, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, the train of his robe filled the temple. Divine beings were surrounding him, crying out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God almighty. Heaven and earth are full of his glory. That's the divine council. You know, in the Bible, when the divine council has assembled, oftentimes when you hear the language of a throne, uh, in the last sermon for this series, I'm gonna take you through the book of Revelation, the whole thing. And I believe the book of Revelation is about the seen and the unseen realm. It goes from earthly scenes of war and conflict and battle and demonic deception and evil and plague and death. And then it also gives us a glimpse into the divine council, the world behind the world, the ruler behind the rulers of this world. 
And it shows the throne and seated on the throne is God the Father and seated at his side is Jesus Christ. And surrounding the throne are angelic beings and human beings and other divine beings, God's family coming together in God's presence to sing God's praises together. That's the divine council. 